Hey guys, it's Dr. Oob here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how stress affects gut function. So I'm a functional medicine doctor practicing in Austin, Texas. Uh, my practice is called Oob Medical, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about gut function and stress and how it affects your adrenal glands and your adrenal glands affect your gut health. Lately, for whatever reason, it's March right now, and I've just been seeing a ton of patients with heartburn and reflux and um, indigestion symptoms. And I've actually been able to tie it for several people down to their stressors. So these are people that have come to see me several times. They've been working on their gut for a month or so. They're eating pretty clean. We've got them on some supplements to rebuild the gut lining, the, the stomach lining specifically, like um, licorice and aloe vera. And they're just not making the progress that we expected. Yet when you dig a little bit further into their history, you find out that, oh, one person went to um, Wisconsin uh, on a vacation and they had no stomach symptoms whatsoever. Another one of my females went to Europe and while in America working her job and stressed, she can't even lick gluten without getting symptoms. While she was in Europe on vacation, she was able to drink as much wine and eat as much bread and croissants as she could fit in her stomach and didn't have any symptoms whatsoever. And then when returning back to America, within 48 hours, she was starting to have symptoms again and realized that, you know what, stress is affecting my gut. The, the take home message to this is I can give you all the supplements and all the herbs and things in the world, but if you're not focusing on your stressors, then you can't make progress. So everyone's stress affects them differently. Some people get irritable, some people can't sleep, um, some people have terrible periods, cramps, many people have pain. And so I want to talk about two main things in this, and that is that the adrenal glands are your hub for stress. So it doesn't matter what kind of stress you have. It doesn't matter if you're running from a tiger, if you're chasing a child around, if someone pulls out in front of you in traffic and you get raging mad. Stress is stress. To your body, all those stressors filter down into one response, and that is your fight or flight response. We call that the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is designed to save your life. So if you're running from a tiger, it's all systems go. You don't need to worry about digestion. You don't need to worry about peeing or pooping. You just need to run as fast as you can. Sacrifice any tissue you need to to run as fast as you can because if you get eaten by the lion or tiger, it doesn't matter if you, um, if you digested your food or not, right? So sacrifice everything and go. So when you're constantly stressed, and that doesn't matter, like I talked about, whether it's money pulling out in traffic or you're worried about your mortgage, worried about finances, all those stressors turn on that fight or flight system. When that fight or flight system is activated, it actually turns off your rest and digest system. So this is one of those balance of powers. If your fight or flight system is always activated all day long, then do you expect to get very well rested sleep? No. Do you expect to digest your food appropriately? No. Do you expect to have a well-balanced mood? No. Because your body thinks it's running from a tiger all day long because it doesn't understand the difference between financial worry and running from a tiger worry. They're all the same. So the, the, what I want to focus on is the gut and how that stress response affects the gut. So if you're going through your day to day not um, re removing your stressors or uh, lowering your perception of stressors, then those stressors start to affect your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands make cortisol, which is your stress hormone, and that cortisol gets better and better at being produced, so you start making more and more cortisol. As you make more and more cortisol, you start breaking down more and more cortisol. So now you've got too much cortisol and too much breakdown products, and this basically leads to too much cortisol and too much breakdown cortisol in the in the system, and those cortisol basically um, stimulate systems that are uh, ready to fire flight or uh, sorry fight or flight. And so it's stimulating the blood pressure, it's increasing the heart rate, it's decreasing digestion, it's decreasing sleep, all those things. So how do we balance the adrenal glands in order to help the gut? So the way you do that is by lowering your perception of stress. It doesn't matter um, what stressor it is, you just have to realize that you are stressing about it, first step, admit it. And then the second step is identify that you're stressed and how you're gonna reduce that stress. So that's different for every person, I won't spend a ton of time doing it, but it doesn't matter if it's meditation, if it's yoga, if it's breathing, if it's just sitting on the carpet, rubbing your hands around the, uh, rubbing your, your fingers through the carpet, whatever it is to lower your stress levels. I tell people to commit 30 seconds per day to to lowering your stress levels. And so that's kind of a, a programmed de-stressor. So that's if you're sitting on the carpet, 30 seconds. If you're meditating, 30 seconds. 
A lot of people use exercise as a de-stressor, and I just want to warn people that while it can be de-stressful, I enjoy it, it, it does help me, but it's also kind of a stressor to the system because you are actually running, you are actually kind of, or exercising or whatever it is. Um, you are stimulating that fight or flight system. So if you're gonna do your 30 seconds of de-stressing every day, I want it to be separate from exercise. And you wanna be making sure that your, per, your perception of stress all day long is also lower. You can't just expect to stress, 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 stress all day long and then meditate for 30 seconds and everything's gonna be fine. So by doing that, you lower the amount of cortisol you produce, you lower the amount of breakdown products you produce, and then that stops affecting the gut so much. So a few key components that cortisol affects in your gut, the number one thing I've been seeing lately for some reason, I've seen people in the ER and I've seen people in the, the office, is a stress response is affecting their heartburn. So in the ER, I normally see people who had a massive acute stressor, a traumatic event or something, and then they're coming in for heartburn and reflux. But in my office, I'm seeing more chronic, long-term kind of job stress, financial stress, that kind of stuff adding up and so but it doesn't matter the process is the same so the cortisol levels when they're high they actually prevent the stomach from making mucus that protect the stomach lining from the acid so in conventional medicine you've probably heard that if you have heartburn or reflux or gastritis whatever you want to call it you've got too much acid I don't believe that you have too much acid. I believe that you don't have enough stomach mucus um, lining to protect yourself from the acid. So yes, technically it is too much acid for the amount of mucus you're producing, but you should be able to produce enough mucus to make a lot of acid. Your stomach has made a lot of acid for years since you were born, that's how it digests food. So why all of a sudden is it a problem now? It's because cortisol, the stress hormone, directly inhibits your stomach from producing mucus. That's a well-known phenomenon. Whenever we put someone on steroids for autoimmune reactions or rashes or um, out of control symptoms for some sort of viral infection or something, we know that that affects the stomach lining. We know that they're at increased risk for ulcers. Why are they at increased risk for ulcers? It doesn't have anything to do with stomach acid. It has everything to do with the stomach lining, not producing enough mucus. So steroids or cortisol, they're the same thing. Cortisol limits the amount of mucus lining that you can produce. So when you're stressing, you don't produce enough mucus lining, and then all of a sudden the acid that's in the stomach is burning holes in the stomach. What happens when the stomach gets irritated? It starts spasming, and it starts shooting acid up your throat, and then that's how you get the heartburn and the burning sensations, or some people skip the burning sensations and just go straight to coughing or sinus congestions or sore throat. So I see a lot of people for heartburn and reflux, um, and I can put them on as many herbs and supplements as I want, but if you're not controlling your stress, you're not gonna make a big difference. Now, if you're someone that's not getting the reflux and the heartburn, but you're someone that's getting lower um, symptoms like uh, bloating or indigestion hours after a meal, gallbladder issues, something like that, then that may, if, if it's cortisol related, then that may be, re be related to yeast overgrowth. So there's been studies that show that acute stressor causes yeast to go into what's called a budding phase. And the budding phase is more aggressive and it's their growing phase. It's kind of like seeds. That's how they make new fungi or new, new offspring is by buds. So whenever you have a stressful event, your cortisol level raises, that the yeast for whatever reason can sense that and they start making more fungi. And then as that process continues, they start to overgrow. And what happens with your cortisol being elevated is that actually lowers your immune system. And your immune system is part of the thing that goes around policing the fungus. So now there's not enough immune system and there's too much fungi, too much candida. And now you've got a real problem on your hands. You can take diflucan, you can take herbs and biocidin and all kinds of things to kill it off. But if you're not managing your stressors, those cortisol levels are still there and you're not going to make a dent in those yeast bugs. So it's all about the whole body, and a lot of it comes down to adrenal dysfunction. So many people that come to me, that's one of the first things we're addressing is their adrenal glands. So if you've never heard of adrenal dysfunction and you're suffering from gut dysfunction of any sort, that doesn't matter whether it's stomach or whether it's small intestinal, whether it's constipation, it doesn't matter. If you're having a gut problem, you should definitely think about looking at your adrenals. Go online, look up some of my videos, look up adrenal dysfunction online, and start looking at the symptoms, and you might notice that, hey, I check a lot of these symptoms, I might have adrenal dysfunction. So I'm not gonna say ignore your gut, but start treating the adrenal glands, lowering your stress, and watch and see if that makes a big difference on your stomach. Especially if you're one of those people that can go on vacation and have no symptoms whatsoever, I think you're onto something. So I rambled a little bit, this video turned out to be a little longer than I anticipated, but I'm a big believer in adrenal function and how it affects our gut and really the whole system. So manage your stress, keep it down, and um, I wish you guys luck.